Hi YouTube, well here's my clownfish diary. I will start by telling you that I've had a disaster in my tank. Um, the when was it? Last week sometime. Uh, I was I fed the fish. The tank all looked clean. Everyone was flying around, eating, enjoying their their day. Um, as you've seen, I had the Singapore Angel and the Cherub Angel. Um, and a cleaner shrimp and a few other things going on in the tank. Well, when I went to bed that evening, the water was looking really cloudy. Uh, now sometimes it does, it'll go cloudy and then it'll go clear again. But this time it looked like a thick, heavy cloud. Um, so I was really concerned. So I got my test kit out about 11 o'clock at night, did a test on everything and it all came back clean. So there wasn't any problems. Uh, clean, you know what I mean. Yeah, clean. It came. It came back at seven point eight, uh, point two five, point two five, and zero. So I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with the water. Maybe it was just having a, a bit of a spike of something or another. So, seeing as I was due to do a water change the next day anyhow, I thought I'd just leave them. Big mistake. Uh, I came down in the morning, and my cherub angel was dead and my Singapore angel was dead. I was absolutely gutted. So I took them out of the fish tank, still not really knowing why. So I decided to do about a 50% water change. With that, everything started looking lively again, and it all seemed to settle down. So I thought that it was just some sort of misdemeanor, and uh, you know, that it was one of those things that just happens sometimes, I guess. So I went to work, uh, worried about the tank all day. I know that sounds sad, but I was really worried. And uh, my wife was phoning me during the day, telling me the clownfish are okay and the anemone is starting to look better. And so I was thinking, oh, that's all right. And uh, I phoned Gareth from the local fish shop, who's absolutely brilliant with his knowledge. And I told him what had happened with the tank, and he said it sounds like something's died in there that you don't know about. And that's caused the water to, to go toxic. So uh, when I got back home from work I had a good look round the tank and attached to the back of my filter uh, which is on the right was an anemone that had died and I didn't realise. So it was all gooey and mushy and it had all gone into the filter and it was pumping all this rubbish round my tank. I'll just get the phone, one minute. Sorry about that rude little interruption. Anyway, I'm back with you now. Yeah, so that's what had happened. One of the enemies had died, made the tank a right mess, and uh, that's what had cost the lives of my little uh, angel fish. So I cleaned it all out, um, got the obviously the dead enemy out, I did another 75% water change on the tank, uh, put the uh, cleaned the pump out properly because it was in a right state. I plugged it all back in. Put it back on, everything was fine, um, the little clowns uh, were started flying around the tank again really happy. Uh, the red bubble tip and enemy uh, started looking more lively again and everything went back to normal in the tank. So uh, it was a terrible loss, I was really gutted. Um, as you know, fellow enthusiasts, when something like that happens it just spoils your week, doesn't it? So uh, that was terrible. But I suppose it's uh, part of the learning process. Um, I certainly will be quick to act on my gut instinct next time. Anyway, so I started worrying a little bit then about the waste in the tank. Uh, so as you can see, I now have a protein skimmer, which is a, a little V2. Oh no, can you believe it? Sorry about that, let me just get this. And I'm back again. Sorry about that one, it's more it's typical, isn't it? Anyway, never mind. Uh, so, yeah, so I've got the protein skimmer now. That's doing a really good job. Um, as you can see, it's bubbling away at top left of the tank. And as the bubbles burst, you get all grime and dirt and rubbish come out the top of that. So that helps to keep the tank clean. Um, and, yeah, so while I was there at the fish shop, you know what it's like. You see something, you fall in love with it, you buy it, you put it in the tank. 
I swore to myself I wasn't going to buy anything for a month or so, just let the tank settle down. But, you know, I went there and I saw this little leopard puffer. He's a Toby puffer. And he's, he's gorgeous. He's, you can see him there at the top of the tank. He's so pretty and docile. And he just sort of floats around the tank like a little helicopter. And then, as you can see, on my live rock on the left, I've got a green emerald crab. Emerald green crab, or whichever way around it is. Uh, with the idea that he could just march around the tank munching on algae or algae or however you want to say it. And uh, he's brilliant. He's, he's in and out of the rocks and constantly eating. So fascinating. I'll get some close-up shots of uh, them both soon. And um, obviously the tank's looking good again. Uh, everything's healthy in there. Nothing's died since the incident. So it's, it's stabilised now. And I'm really happy about that because I was proper gutted. Problem I've got now, as you can see, the lid of the tank is hanging off. And the skimmer doesn't fit inside the tank. And the skimmer wasn't cheap in itself. And, you know, the tank was driving me up the wall. It's not exactly what I wanted. Um, I can't cut the lid of the tank because all the lighting structure's in there. So I brought the skimmer to the front of the tank, which was the only place that it could possibly go. And when the lid's on, it pushes the skimmer too low and it doesn't work in the water. Because it needs to be out of the water by, uh, you know, a couple of mil. So that was driving me up the wall. Um, really distracting me. <laughs> I was stressing over it. Because yeah, I want my tank to be right for my fish, as you guys all know. Yeah, you're probably the same as me. Um, so, that got me looking for tanks then. As I've said before, I wanted a bigger tank. And uh, it just so happened that one came available near me. So I'll introduce you to my new big, well it's not big, but it's well, it's bigger than uh, the previous one. Ta-da! So that is a 240 litre Aqua One. Uh, 980, AR980 and it's got an internal filter uh, it's got the uh, three strip lights inside it it's a pretty cool tank, I'm well chuffed with it, I know it's not amazing but going from what I've gone from to that is incredible so now I'm going to be able to um, well I'm trying to work out a way of getting that little skimmer and putting it in this tank whether it needs it or not, I'm not sure. The person I bought it off was already running a marine tank and she didn't use a skimmer at all because it's got like a big three-part um, filter on top of the tank uh, which apparently does a really good job. Uh, obviously it's got the heater, it's got um, a wave maker with it and what else has it got? Like another little pump with it as well. So but before I do anything with that, I'm going to go and check out the shop, see what they think I need. Obviously I need a bit more sand and then my plan is just to transfer my marine uh, directly to this tank. Um, now obviously I'm going to need a lot more rock and blah 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 all the rest of it. But my plan for now is get the rest of the sand tomorrow. Start putting the sand in, in the new tank. And then gradually um, get it to a position where I'm able to switch my marine tank over to this one. And I think, to be honest with you, instead of it just being a clownfish tank, I'm going to end up with more of a reef. Um, that, that's the, the plan, I guess. But, but plans change, as you know, especially when you're into your aquariums. Then my next plan of action is with the little 64 litre tank, um, which is a tropical. I plan to take the fish out of that and take them to the local fish shop who says he does credit notes and then clean the tank all out and turn that into a marine tank as well and I plan on putting one or two fish in there uh, primarily I would love a porcupine puffer and uh, both of the fish shops near me have got porcupine puffers uh, one's got one that's about two inches long it's mega cute in a, a kind of weird, ugly kind of way, if that makes sense. <laughs> but it is cool. I know they make a lot of mess, so I'll probably have to use a similar skimmer to the one I've got there. 
if obviously my big tank doesn't need the skimmer that's ideal because I can just use one off the little tank on that one and because the uh, the lid on that tank's higher it should be able to take the skimmer no problem so that's my plan I have to see how that goes um, tomorrow it's bank holiday Monday I don't know whether you get that all around the world or whether it's just something we have in Britain um, but yeah so it means no work or anything tomorrow but the local fish shop is open so uh, I might be going there and flexing my credit card you never know so I've enjoyed doing the build of the clownfish tank and now it's on to the next chapter really I guess um, thanks for watching so far I will keep you up to date with everything that happens good and bad I don't like hiding things um, because uh, maybe a mistake that I make uh, you won't have to make if you've been watching this but thank you for watching appreciate the uh, comments Blue Damsel, amazing as always. Uh, I was laughing my head off at your video the other day. Yeah, it was really good with the uh, snail and the hermit crab battle. Absolutely brilliant. I watched it the day after, I, or the day or so after I lost all the stuff in my tank. And uh, I, was, I was really laughing. Uh, in fact, I watched it a couple of times. So thumbs up to you, Blue Damsel. Doing a cracking job. Bye for now, guys.